in the year 2013. This is 2027. Where will I be? The children that you've given to us to look after. And the many thousands and tens of thousands that we will reach. <sighs> North Korea shall become one, says the Lord. North Korea, your president is dead. He is already dead. I've already written now on the wall. Many, many, take a passer. God said, your days are numbered. You have been counted in the balances. Therefore, Kim, it is now time now for you to face this that you have done has been iniquitous. You are no longer alive. You are a vegetable. You are brain dead. And God said, because of that, I will cause that to bring about unity in South and North Korea. And the greatest move of the Spirit shall come from there. America shall look and say, what is this happening? We thought we could make peace through United Nations. Hey, what is the United Nation? It is an evil force, says the Lord, that is a stench to my nostrils. They are not what I have called, God said, my church shall arise and invade the kingdoms of this world and the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our God and His Christ, says the Lord. The mountain shall be built by men. The mountain shall be built by men. Go to a higher place. Shall be born to nothing. Man-made mountain only reach man-made achievements. I am about to breathe upon the nation again. Out of your need shall come a great deed. Out of your need I will perform a great deed. God said, I have looked to and fro across the earth. And men have mocked my prophets as they have said. The Lord shall indeed return to Zion. He shall indeed return to, turn to Zion. And for the redeemed of the Lord shall say so. The redeemed of the Lord shall speak. Not, it shall not be the voice of men, but the voice of my blood that cries out. I am about to breathe once again upon my nation and upon the nations of the earth. This wind that shall come shall startle the people. And they will say, as, as something happened, that this would do such injustice to our religion. God said, I am not impressed with your religion. I am not impressed with man-made policies that are not driven by the Spirit of the living God. I am about to show you what you are birthed for. I did not create the nations of the earth in vain. I formed you for, it, for you to be inhabited. Now prepare yourself for the great inhabitation of a spectacular thing which will be which will be as great and as powerful as the chariot of fire and the horses of fire that suddenly came and appeared to Elisha and Elisha at the same time. So it shall be for you. If we get to the six, seven minutes of rejoicing, and I want you to do that because the Lord told me to do that. I mentioned that many churches today are crucified between two thieves. An erroneous, false religious system with man-made laws and secular humanism. You know what secular humanism is. We are in the beginning stages 
of a reformation. Now people of as I said have laughed at me about this. And a recovery. And I'm talking about in the church. For what purpose? Apostolic Christianity. To recover apostolic Christianity, we need to return to the basics. The foundations of the first century church. And I want to say something. Somehow the church has skipped the simple. The simple. In search of the sensational. And when I say sensational, I'm referring to the dynamics of spiritual revival and renewal. The fire of God, the signs, the wonders, the miracles. These are very important. But for our desire to have this so much, we have missed the foundations of basic Christian living. No structure, listen to me, no structure can excel the strength of its grounding. It cannot excel the strength of its foundation. Without revelation, the people perish. Without progressive revelation, the people para, which it means to go backwards. I'm not about to go backwards. I'm only about to go forward. How many of you ready for that? I was the cool of the day in the garden of Eden. I was the burning bush in the desert. I was the wilderness in Nahum, the prophet's vision. I was the voice in Bilam's donkey. I was the still small voice to Elijah. I am the revelation of Jesus. I am, not me, I'm speaking about that revelation. I was the rustling of leaves in the mulberry tree, forcing day to advance and to fight. I was the revelation and I wrote on the wall, Elahi Elahi when he wrote, Mene, Mene, your years are numbered, your days are time, they're over. I was the sword of Gideon and the Lord, the star that guided the wise men, the angel at Abraham's tent, the cleft in the rock. I was the revelation and I am the revelation. The fire in the cloud at Sinai and the tongue of fire on the day of Pentecost. I am that I am. I am the revelation of Jesus Christ. I tell you the story of love. I tell you the story of sorrow. I tell you the story that saves some and the story that destroys others. I am the revelation of Jesus Christ. I am close to the marriage altar and when the grave opens I stand nearby. I call the one drop. I rescue souls from the deep. I open the lips of lovers and through me the dead whisper to the living. I serve one as I serve all. I am the revelation of Jesus. I open a vista to the universe and after experiencing me, you will feel that there is meaning to life after all. I am the revelation of Jesus. Jesus, we never want you to stop speaking. Show yourself, reveal yourself. Wherever we may be, we will honor you. So we say welcome.